ожидаем, конечно, никакого такого масштабного снижения курса рубля. We are, of course, not expecting any kind of massive decrease in the rubles exchange rate, because the decline in the oil price we saw was the third biggest in the last 40 years, and the amount of external debt that has to be paid this year is about a third less than last year. Year-on-year -year inflation, could it go beyond 20%? Inflation may be higher than the current 15 percent. We have inflation above 15 percent in annual terms now, but these higher levels of inflation are driven by past factors. Moreover, I'd like to point out that other inflationary factors will subside. We expect a contraction in economic activity and, of course, a contraction in demand. On top of that, we have very moderate dynamics in the money supply data. That's why we really expect inflation to slow down in the second quarter, after the second quarter, in the second half of the year, and into 2016. That's why there is no reason to talk about the inevitability of a rate increase. When do you see lowering rates? We'll make the decision on rates based on our analysis of the situation in the economy, our forecast on the economy's development, and above all, on the dynamics of inflation. Analyzing the entire balance of risks, inflationary, risks to growth, and to financial stability. We'll make a decision that is consistent with our task of reducing inflation within the framework of our inflation targeting and achieving a level of 4% in the mid-term. When you lowered rates from 17% to 15%, you surprised almost everybody. And the conversation began, how independent really is Russia's central bank? Are you independent or is this an arm of the Kremlin? <laughs> When we made the decision on cutting rates, we didn't do it at the expense of inflation, nor was it at the expense of our task in reducing inflation. We based it on our forecast for inflation and for economic growth. Of course, there is a lot of criticism of the central bank, but the Bank of Russia is very used to criticism. There are interest groups in the economy. Some gain from a weak ruble, others gain from a strong ruble. For many years, the central bank has been criticized on all sides, so we are used to it. Are you independent? We are independent. Where do you see growth in 2015 if the oil price is around 50 bucks? If oil is going to be around where it is now, around $50 a barrel, our latest estimates show the economy will decline. We'll have a contraction of about 3 to 4 percent. How big of an issue are the sanctions for you as you, as you run the bank? Sanctions are, of course, a negative. We can see that in our balance of payments, in the pressure on the exchange rate and inflationary effects. It's an issue but we are trying to react to it with our own instruments. We've developed new methods, new instruments to help banks and companies pay their external debt, like foreign currency refinancing. We are becoming more flexible in order to answer these challenges. I guess as a central banker, it makes you work a little bit harder. It, it makes the, the sanctions make your life a, a bit more challenging. Naturally. How concerned are you about a banking crisis in Russia? We are constantly monitoring the banking system. There is no doubt the economy's contraction will affect the banking system. But that's an absolutely expected event. Bankers will offer less loans. Lending rates will be a little bit higher because there will be credit risk. And the quality assets will get worse. But we don't see any systemic problems. Our stress tests show that the banking sector will get through this difficult period in a stable condition. You've obviously been studying how other countries have gone through similar crises to the one that Russia's in now. Have you identified some things that you say to yourself, 
That's thing. That's one thing that this central bank definitely won't do. What we won't do for sure, we won't spur economic growth by raising inflation, issuing more money. In my view, other countries' experience with that has been absolutely obvious. Countries attempt to spur economic growth by increasing inflation, by excessively pumping money into the system, leads to the exact opposite. Secondly, we won't fix the exchange rate. And third, we won't impose administrative restrictions on capital flows. I think it's absolutely unproductive. What's your biggest fear? It's not even a fear, it's a concern and a task we need to take on for our future. We need structural reforms because neither monetary nor budget policy can create stable economic growth. They are just conditions for growth. In order to create stable growth, we need to improve the investment climate. We need private investment. Measured budget and monetary policy are just conditions for those reforms which could take the country into an entirely different growth trajectory. That's what worries me most. Everyone always talks about uh, conducting structural reforms, but they haven't really happened. But now it's vital. You know the Russian president. You're his economic advisor. I'm sure you speak on, on occasion now. Do you think he's ready for structural reforms? Yes, I'm absolutely sure of that. Do you have a favorite central banker or a central banker out there outside of Russia that you say, wow, I, I really respect what they do? I've got a lot of respect for Paul Volcker. He was able to reduce inflation and carry the country through a difficult period. How often do you check the oil price? Often, several times a day. Really? Why is the central bank buying so much gold? We really did increase our gold purchases in 2014. We did it for two reasons. First, we are diversifying our foreign currency and gold reserves. And two, we are solving the problem of ruble liquidity. We have a lack of collateral when the central bank provides rubles to commercial banks. A lot of emerging countries have this problem. That's why we are developing operations involving gold purchases in order to provide ruble liquidity. We've got a pretty big share of gold in our reserves, a little less than 12 percent. But we are not the biggest gold holders. You've got 39, close to 39 million troy ounces. How much more gold do you need? We'll decide based on the situation. What are you going to do with it all? That's what reserves are for, whether they are in gold or foreign currency. They may be needed in different situations. President Putin met with the leaders of Germany and France over the weekend, peace talks for Ukraine. You're sitting in the central bank. The ruble strengthened in the, in the um, lead up to those talks. There were expectations. How do you prepare for the reaction to them? A lot of factors affect the ruble's exchange rate, geopolitics, of course, and oil. We've moved to a floating rate. We assume that under the influence of various factors, geopolitical, the oil price, and the domestic economy's condition, the ruble rate will be defined by market factors. That's why we don't make any special preparations for monitoring how this or that factor will affect the ruble. I repeat, we will only intervene in the foreign currency market if there are moves that create risks to financial stability. There was a moment in December when the ruble uh, fell to 80 uh, to the dollar. Could that happen again? December the 16th was a really particular day in a lot of ways. There was a great deal of volatility and a big jump in the exchange rate. But why was that day unique? Because that was the day that we de facto moved to a floating ruble. At the beginning of November, we announced that we'll shift to a floating ruble, 
but due to our assessments of the risks to financial stability, we intervened on the foreign currency market frequently, and the market got used to those interventions. But December 16th, we left the market. We really left the market. That was the shift to a floating exchange rate. That's why we increased the key rate at the same time. And the volatility in a lot of ways was driven by this shift from one approach that we had for many years when we controlled the exchange rate, managed the rate, to a floating regime. That, that's one way of saying you don't see the ruble returning to 80 to the dollar. I don't see any reason for such sharp moves.